shadows Bound for the gallows A dead man walking To love came calling Rise up Rise up Rise up Rise up Six feet Good morning, everyone. Good to see all of you. Uh, it is the first Sunday in November. That's crazy, isn't it? First Sunday in November, we have Miss BQ. Hey, how are you? Going to play a song for us to get us started this morning.
Thank you, BQ. Well, good morning, everyone. Just want to uh, welcome you. If you are visiting with us for the first time, welcome. Uh, there is a card that's in front of you. If you could maybe just uh, fill that out for us, put a little information on there. We'll uh, collect that from you when we receive an offering in a little bit so that we can have a record of your visit. Thank you for joining us on Facebook Live. It's always an honor to have you as well. So just a few things. Uh, let me mention this, and uh, I don't know if Lisa wants to say anything <clears throat> or not, but our trunk or treat uh, that we had uh, this past Thursday night was a very big success. I know that uh, Adrian was kind of keeping a, a count over there uh, for kids that we had with some bags that she was giving away. And I want to say she gave away 160 bags, maybe somewhere in that neighborhood. And I believe she was just giving those to the kids. So uh, their parents were with them. So I, we could have easily had 300 people that, you know, came through the parking lot uh, to celebrate uh, Jesus with us the other night. So thanks to all of you. Yes. Thanks for all of you who came and were participating. All the trunks, they looked really, really good. It was just a wonderful, uplifting night. And uh, so we're just grateful for all of you who uh, took uh, time out of your schedule to come and help us with this community event. So thanks so, so much. Also, Lisa and I would like to thank you for all the cards and the gifts and the, the hugs and uh, everything for Pastor Appreciation last week. We love you guys more than you know, and uh, we're just so grateful uh, to you guys for uh, celebrating that with us. I, I was telling somebody the other day, I said, to be honest with you, I had not really even thought much about it, uh, being October is Pastor Appreciation Month. I just hadn't uh, had time to really uh, think much about that, so you surprised me uh, the other day. So thank you so much for uh, doing that, and it's just a joy to be your pastor. Um, okay, in way of announcements, just a few things here. This Thursday, Tasha, we have the seniors event that's going to be here. That starts at 11 o'clock, correct? 11 o'clock, all of our seniors, please come. It's going to be a bingo day, and uh, going to be some good food on the menu. I believe we're doing a, a Thanksgiving feast, uh, so don't miss out on that. Make sure that you come and be part of that seniors at 11 o'clock on Thursday. Uh, Tuesday, our ladies' Bible study called Belong is still going on. Miss Carolyn's part of that Bible study. We have that here for those ladies, so if you would like to be part of that, come on. We'd love to have you. Um, let's see. Today is, let's see, I think we actually closed the Janie Chapman offering last Sunday, so we'll be beginning now on the um, Lottie Moon, which will be coming. We'll be talking more about that. So we, we received $1,045 of our $1,500 goal. So all of you who donated to that, thank you so much. We appreciate your donations, and I know that the state convention will as well. Uh, chili and pie cook-off, that's coming up in a couple of weeks. If uh, you make a good mean chili, make sure that you bring one with you. It'll be a lot of fun. We have a special guest entertainer uh, that's going to be here, uh, the... Um, the clues have been in your newsletter, and uh, hopefully you uh, have formulated a, a guess. So if you would, just out on the table out here, there is a place for you to put your guess in that box so that we can see if anybody has guessed who this is. Uh, bus ministry, if you'd like to be part of that, just see uh, Miss Karen or Brother Mike, Brother Joe, and uh, help with that. And then uh, let's see, Aiken Christmas Parade. We've got that coming up. So see Trish. I know there's a sign-up sheet out there for that. So October is now over. So that's it. Christmas card season is coming. And also, Brother Ron, we will try to figure out with him how to uh, get our Medicaid class rescheduled or Medicare class rescheduled for that. Any further announcements? Yes. <clears throat> that was good. That was real good. So I just want to say that uh, this coming Wednesday night is our sock battle. So I need you all here on Wednesday night. If you have any boxes that you have that you want to donate to the sock battle, we would appreciate it. Any boxes that we have once we finish up with our sock battle, the good boxes we are going to be given to um, Megan, she'll be using those boxes for something. And also, <clears throat> just a reminder that Operation Christmas Child Shoe Boxes, we have them. If you're interested in doing a box, it's $10 to ship. We will be sending that, we'll take them, deliver them to the church that will be taking them on at the end of the month. So it's like the 
Sunday, it's not the last Sunday, so it's, it's the Sunday before the last Sunday that we'll be taking them. So if you're interested, just let me know. And if you want to just sponsor a box, then you can just pay the $10 for that. But make sure that um, if you're sponsoring a box and you want stuff to go in that box from you, then let us know what you donate over and above the $10 for shipping. And if you have any questions, just come and see me. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Anything further? Other announcements? Okay. okay. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you again for today. It's just a joy to be able to come back to your house just to uh, sing together and fellowship together as a family and also, Lord, to open your words. So we're just grateful, Lord, that you give us these opportunities. We just ask that uh, we can just uh, put things aside for a little while, Lord, so that we can focus on you and celebrate you. So just help us, Lord, as we strive to do that today. We just ask that your will is done in all that happens here this day. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. Stand with me. Let's sing a great song called Crown Him King of Kings. Let's sing. fellowship one with another this morning. Tell somebody that you and Jesus love them.
your seats. Sing this great old tune with us. I'll fly away. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, bye and bye. I'll fly away. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Sorry, I was enjoying fellowship time. <laughs> so this is called Mending a Broken Heart. Hey guys, how are you guys today? You doing good? How about all of you? Having a good day? It's a beautiful day in the house of the Lord, right? That's right. Now, let me ask you, are you happy and are you full of energy? How many of us are full of energy? You're kind of? Okay, that's how I feel sometimes. You full of energy, Sophie? That is awesome. So I'm, I'm glad that you are feeling good and you have a little bit of energy. But do you always feel good or are there days when you feel a little bit sad? A little bit sad. That's right. That's right. I had a student the other day and she just started crying. And I'm like, baby, what's wrong? You know, I'm rushing to, like it's an emergency. I don't know what's wrong. I just feel like I need to cry. And she did. She just took about three minutes. And she just, and then she you know, wiped her nose, blew, blew her nose, you know, wiped her eyes, blew her nose. And she said, Miss Anna, I just feel so much better. You know, sometimes you just got to get it out. So have you ever felt so sad, though, that you felt like your heart was going to break? You ever had one of those moments? And it feels, I mean, it's just sad. And you just feel like... No matter what you do, it's just not going to help it right then and there. But sometimes things happen in our lives that make us feel brokenhearted. Perhaps someone you loved very much passed away, or maybe there was a divorce in the family, or, or perhaps your best friend moved away. There are many things that can make us feel very sad, even brokenhearted. And when you feel really sad, what are some things that you can do to make yourself feel better? Sophie, what do you do to make yourself feel better if you're sad? Amen. I heard that. <laughs> give a hug. That's true. Because you give me, Sophie and I get to hug each other every day at Carline. So every day I get, I know if it's a good day or a bad day, and most days it's this. But we get to give each other a hug, which always makes me have a wonderful day, right? Ethan, if you're sad, what do you do? You just sit down? Okay, okay. You just, have to, you just have to sit down and think about it for a moment. Get yourself back together. Hey, I love it. That's a great plan. Now, so what do, this is the adults, what do some of you do when you feel sad? Pray, right? Pray. Anybody else? Music, yes. Worship, mm-hmm. So, uh, and sleep. <laughs> when, you, when you have three children, sometimes you just have to rest, okay? Let me tell you. <laughs> now, sometimes when you're very sad, you might cry, like my student. Why would that help you feel better? If you cry, why would that make you feel better? Sophie, do you cry sometimes if you're sad? Does it make you feel better if you get it all out? You do? Good, good. So it helps us to have a good cry sometimes just to get rid of all the emotion and all the tension you feel inside. And you can use tissues. Get the soft ones that have the lotion in there, though, okay? Get the tissues so you can blow your nose and wipe away your tears. And listen, my sister, when she gets sad, she runs. That's her thing. She goes running. Jogging helps her 
feel better. And let me tell you, I would like to do it with her, but I really enjoy watching her do it and tell her to do something for me while she's at it. <laughs> but sometimes we can even call a friend if we're sad. If you talk to a friend, do you feel better? If you hug your friend, do you feel better? That's right. And that goes for us adults as well. So when you're feeling sad, it can really help to talk to a friend about it. You can call them or even in person. Does anyone in this congregation have any idea of how to feel better when you're sad? What would you do to make you feel better? Snuggle, Snuggle with your mom. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yes, ma'am. That's a good that's a good one. That's right. Help somebody else. That's great. Dan, you're right. I have a sign up in my kitchen that says the kitchen's made for dancing because my kids and I, we'd have the music jamming while we were cooking and we would just enjoy worshiping the Lord, dancing in the kitchen because, you know, David did sing and dance, right? But just enjoy praising the Lord even when we were cooking, okay? So Psalm 34, 18 says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. When you're sad, Reminding yourself that God is close to you can help you feel better. He really cares about you and especially close when you're sad. So remember to read God's word, the Bible, when you're sad and pray about your sadness. God will hear you, comfort you, and give you the strength you need to get through the tough times. So just remember, when you're sad, when you're down, when you're brokenhearted, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit because he loves us. And we can always go to him. He is our best friend. Amen. Thank you, Lisa. We want to take just a few minutes this morning and uh, have a time of prayer. And um, <clears throat> we just want to uh, give you some little slips of paper, and those of you who've been with us now for a while know that we have our prayer bowl down here, and um, these kids are going to distribute to you these pieces of paper so that you can write out your prayer request and just come up. The altar's open. You can take this time to come and pray, and uh, just make sure that you leave all of your petitions and everything to the Lord this morning. So they'll be bringing those around, and if you'd like to come and pray, please do so.
Amen. Thank you all so much. Stand with me. Uh, let's sing a little bit more this morning. Our uh, uh, prayer bowl will be here for you for the rest of the service until the end of the day. So if you have one that you haven't been able to put in yet, you still have time. But let's sing together this morning.
sweet drops around us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Let's see, my brother Mike. Let us pray. Father, as we come to you this morning, Lord, we, we bring many things to you. We bring the thankfulness of your day. And we bring the blessings that you share with us. When Lisa says, what do you do when you're sad? I count my many blessings, Lord, and I named them one by one. And I thank you for those blessings, Lord, and I, I thank you, Lord, just to let you know how thankful I am. Thankful that, that I can stand before you and that I can pray to you and I know that you answer them. I know that you hear me, Lord. And you answer. It might not be the answer that I want, Lord. And none of us will never get the answer that we want, Lord. But you're there with us. You let us know that you're there with us. And you let us know that everything that we're involved in, Lord, is through your will. It's going to happen the way you want it, regardless as to what we might think or regardless as to what we want. It's going to be what you want, Lord. And it's time that we need to act like that, that we know that it's going to be your, it's going to be your will. It's not going to be what we want, Lord. Lord, we ask that you bless our church family. We have those amongst us that are have various problems. We have church members that are in the hospital, Lord, or home, you know, that can't be here, Lord, that are watching you on Facebook, watching us on Facebook. We pray for those people because we know that this is where they want to be and that they can't be here, Lord. So we, so we pray for them. Father, we pray for all of our church ministries this morning. And these, these ministries are, are important to us, Lord, and they're important to you, and they need, they need our backing. Father, we ask that you, you bless our country. In the next few hours, we're going to be voting for a president. We're going to be voting for a leader of this country, Lord. And here again, that's going to be your will as well. And somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose, but it behooves us to support whoever that person is because that's, that's what you say, Lord. And here again, that person is there. That person will be there for because you put them there. It will, it will be your will. And Lord, sometimes when I think about the two candidates, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I think that that as a country and as citizens, we don't have a lot to choose from. And maybe that's your way of saying, country, you need to get on your knees and you need to get straight. Because when you put two candidates that we have, and, you know, we can... It, it doesn't it doesn't say much for us as, as, a, as a nation when it's all said and done and just being honest with you so bless us Lord we ask that you bless our tithes and offerings that we are about to receive and we ask that you you bless the person that gives and you bless those people and be with those people that make decisions Lord as to how our monies will be spent. And in closing, Lord, we ask that you be with our minister today and, and 
give him the words to say that, that there's somebody that that's not here that doesn't know you that listens to us on, on Facebook, Facebook or if it's someone that is here that they'll find their way to the cross the cross meaning your salvation here Lord and they'll find their way to this altar because we're none promised tomorrow Lord all these things we ask in your name Amen Thank you, Suzanne. Amen. Stand with me. Let's sing a little this morning, starting with forever. Forever we will praise the Lord. Amen. Let's sing together. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, his love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, his love endures forever. Sing praise, 
Aren't you glad we serve a God who's with us forever? Amen. Well, let's thank him for all he's done for us this morning. Let's sing together. Everybody. My Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the miry clay. Almighty, forever, I will never be the same because you came near from the everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Well, it is truly a joy to be back with you again this morning. And I think we're doing Children's Church. Thank you, Miss Susan. God bless you guys. I appreciate that. But it is good to see you. I believe that God has already been a blessing uh, this morning. He has for me. Is it really the, the first Sunday in November? Time is flying by, and it uh, doesn't matter what we do, we can't stop it, can we? But for me, I, maybe it's the older I get, but for time for me just keeps getting faster and faster. What's the old song? Time keeps on slipping into the future. Y'all ever heard that song? I don't remember who sang that song. It ain't a gospel song. So anyway, but it's a good song, I guess. But over the next few weeks, we are going to be putting some emphasis on giving thanks. Everybody say giving thanks. Giving thanks, that's what we're going to do, being thankful, and being thankful for who God is in our life and uh, how we are thankful to each other just for being family. But today we are going to do our best to wrap up our Family Matters series. This is message number 12, 
And this is a series that we can always refer back to as we are continually going along. I mean, everything relates to families, so we'll be able to do that. But next Sunday, I would like to begin uh, just a short series uh, based on giving thanks and thanksgiving and that kind of thing. So stay tuned for that. But this Family Matters series, in my opinion, has been a good one. It's been a really good one. And as I began this series, I think I've told you this a time or two, I really didn't have an, an end date or a message count or anything like that. We just kind of let the Lord lead in the direction that he wanted us to go in with the Family Matters. And I believe that we have done that. I just wanted to let Lord to, to let the Lord lead through it. It's just time to move on from that. So we're going to finish up this passage today in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But 12 months of messages, and it seems like longer than this to me, but not that it's been a dread, but it's just been, it just seems like it's just been, we've been talking about it. Maybe it's the t-shirts or whatever, but three months of sermons is what this has amounted to uh, over 12 weeks. So, but I believe that we should by now have a better understanding about what it means to operate in the church as a family. And I just cannot express to you how important this is. We must act as a family. And here in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, we can see in Paul's writings to this church at Corinth about working together in unity. And, and we talk about that a lot. And the reason that we do is not because we're disunified, but it's because it's important to stay unified. It's important to not let our differences cost us the unity that we're supposed to have in Jesus. And that, that is what this is part of. He has blessed us with this. But isn't it good to know, and I think about this sometimes, isn't it good to know that every believer has been delivered at least one spiritual gift? Y'all agree with that? I mean, we have. We have been given that, and that's great to know that God thinks enough of us to do that. He has given us something, and we should be willing to identify that gift and be willing to use that gift or those gifts in some cases as we do our individual part as the family of God, as we grow together in Jesus. In this final section of verses here in chapter 12 are verses 27 to 31. So if you have your Bibles, I would invite you to turn there. Again, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 27 to 31. And when you have found your place, if you would, please stand with me as we honor the reading of God's Word. 1 Corinthians 12. 27 to 31. If you got it, say I got it. All right, here's how it reads. Paul says, now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Now, notice that there is a uh, space between a and part. I am always careful about how I use that word, those two words, because sometimes you can say a part, and that means that you are divided. But that's not the way this says here. It is a Part. So notice that. That's important that we see that. You might not think that's funny, but I do. I'm careful about how I write things. Make sure that I don't say a part. I say a part because there's a difference in the way that that's pronounced. But God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, the gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Then in verse 29, he asks some questions. He says, are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do we all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. So let's pray again this morning. Lord, thank you once again for this passage. As we're coming to a close here with this. We're just grateful for these past 12 weeks. We've been able to build this momentum with our family series, and we just pray, Lord, that you will just continue to bless us as a family. Even though we are diversified, we are unified. So, Lord, just help us to be able to use our gifts together, Lord, in a way that will be pleasing to you. So we thank you. We love you. We give you praise for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> as we begin this morning, let's remind ourselves, please be reminded of this, because this is important to you. This section of gifts that Paul has mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that's not an all-exhaustive list. That's just a few spiritual gifts that God granted in this section of verses here that we're talking about. It's definitely not a complete list. It's only a list that was relevant to what was happening at the church of Corinth at the time that Paul wrote the letter. And to demonstrate for those folks the variety, everybody say variety, the variety of gifts that God can give. 
Now, it certainly has implications for you and me today. Absolutely it does for the church today. We can learn from these. We can put them in practice in the church today if they're spirit-led. If God gave them to us, then we use them for him. And that's the reason that we're looking at this. But we should pay close attention to what is being said here. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have got <clears throat> something going on here today. Let me get a little swig here. I know there's some colds and allergies and all kinds of things going on. I pray that's not what this is. But, uh, but we should pay close attention to what's being said here because it's so important today just as much, listen, just as much today in the local church as it was to the people of the church at Corinth. There's some serious stuff that is mentioned here that still exists in the church today. And today's church finds itself in many cases at least right where this church of Corinth was. And in some cases, maybe even further away. But let's remember that Paul is telling us here throughout this passage, he's, he's reminding us of this, the, the Lord is sovereign. That's who he is. God is God and we are not. God is sovereign. We are not. We have no say-so in it. It is all him. He's telling us that our sovereign Lord has given the church perfect provision. Everybody say perfect provision. He's given us perfect provision, uh, perfect provision, I should say, in equipping his church. He equips us. He's put every piece of the puzzle, we'll use that term loose, loosely, so to speak. He's put that piece of the puzzle in place and he continues to add piece by piece to the church. Why does he do that? To accomplish his will in the church. And the really awesome part of this is, is you and I are all pieces of the puzzle. We're all part of his plan. So how can we determine that, maybe you're asking? All it takes is to just take one look around at any church, this one or any other church in this county or anywhere else in the world, and you're going to find that it is a diversified church. Everything is diversified. What I mean by that is there are differences. There are differences in the gifts and differences in how they are used. But every believer, listen, this is important to get, Every believer has their set of spiritual gifts. They belong to you. God gave them to you. None of them are the same. We have a diversified set of gifts, but then we must use them as a unified body in the will of the Lord. And I love what verse 11 says here in chapter 12. We'll backtrack to that for just a second. Let me remind you, it says, all these, and this is speaking of gifts, all these, are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He, that's an important word, He distributes them to each one just as, here's that word again, He determines. Now this is such a clear reminder that the gifts that we have been gifted with come from Him. We have zero input into what He gives us, but we only use what He has gifted us with. You see, it's not an accident that you are gifted just the way that you are. It's not an accident. God knows what he's doing. Listen, if you are where you're supposed to be, and, I, and what I mean by that is you're in the right church, you're in the right city, you're in the right state, wherever God has placed you, wherever your feet are, then the gifts that he has given you will fit together with all the others for the purpose of accomplishing his will. That's why you're gifted. If you're in the right place, you will see it being used the way that it needs to be used, if you're willing. And it will never, ever be about what we think our gifts ought to be. It never will be. It is only about and always will only be about the way that he gives us his gifts to be used through us. Now, if we're following God's will for our lives, then he's going to provide what we need when we need it. We will see him working through it. God never makes a mistake. Isn't that good to know? Our God is sovereign. He never makes mistakes. And we must be following him to be in the center of his will as a person, as a blood family, and also as a church family. Through this final paragraph, Paul gives us two things that I believe that we can learn from. We're at least going to touch on one of those. But first, 
he gave the church at Corinth sort of a priority list. See if you can notice that. And in, in this list to the people at Corinth, verses 27 and 28 gives us this list of priorities for them. Let, let me read verse 28 with you again. I've gotten this on the screen as well. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of a helping of guidance and of different kinds of tongues. Now, looking at the context of this verse, we must remember that the church of Corinth was severely misusing their gifts. This is why this is listed this way. Division, arguing, strife, discontent, all of these things had reared their ugly heads in this church at Corinth. Paul in this letter to them is making a valiant effort to help set them straight. That's what he's doing here. So we continue to see here that each gift plays its own role within the church body. And although they're diversified, they must be used in unity. Each role has a specific function in the church. Each person that possesses the spiritual gift, with that spiritual gift comes the responsibility of using it to build the kingdom of God. Why, why you have it? Our gifts must be used in humility. They must be used in love. They must be used in cooperation as we strive to, to serve the Lord and his family together as a family. Well, Paul began to ask him some rhetorical questions. He asked him here, he said, are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all, all miracle workers, healers? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret the tongues. Now, no one from that day would have been able to answer yes to any of those questions. They wouldn't have been. Because God gifted all of them in a different manner, just as he has us today. He does that as he chooses to do. So verse 31 tells us something. It says that we should be eager. We should be eager in desiring our spiritual gifts. We as believers today should want to know what our spiritual gifts are. We should ask ourselves, what is the greater gift in my life? What is that? Lord, how have you gifted me, and how can I use whatever those gifts are for your glory? As this is the last message of this series on family matters, we should see that Paul went to great lengths to establish something. He was looking for proper attitudes toward every gift of the Spirit from the church at Corinth. Now, much like the church today, this, this church at Corinth, it exalted some of the gifts on a higher plane as some of the other gifts. Some were more important than others. So Paul wanted them to recognize that all spiritual gifts are from the Lord and all are blessings for us to use in Him. Now looking over the last 12 weeks, I believe that there are at least four principles that we should take from this series. First, every Christian, everybody say every Christian. Every Christian is a necessary, beneficial member of the church. Every single one. All of them. And if you've been listening over the last 12 weeks, and you will know that this is a priority that I've been hammering on pretty hard. Everyone is important. Everyone has a purpose that is designed just for you. Every one of you are needed all of you are wanted, and quite frankly, all of you are very much depended on. We're family. The church needs you. The church needs your set of gifts to function within the will of God. You are necessary as you fit into the larger picture of the church that God has ordained. Again, this is not by accident that you're here. You've been beneficial because God uses you to accomplish His will as part of a team of believers together, not in a unified, or excuse me, in a unified, not a uniform fashion. You see, as far as I'm concerned, 
there isn't really anything that is much worse for a human being than to not feel needed or to not feel wanted or to not feel that someone is depending on you. That's a very empty feeling to walk around when nobody needs me. Nobody wants me. I have nothing to offer anybody that would be of any value. For Christians deep down, listen, we know that we have something to offer. We have been assured that God has granted us a spiritual gift or even spiritual gifts, but yet we feel that our gifts might be insignificant or perhaps maybe they're going unnoticed. You may be feeling as if you're living your life with no purpose. You might be feeling as, as if you have nothing to offer. Friends, let me tell you something. It is through your spiritual gifts that you will find your purpose. It's through your spiritual gifts that you have everything that God has given you to offer everyone. Listen, there is nothing that is insignificant about you. Nothing. There is no need for you to feel unimportant. There is no need for you to feel unneeded. There is no need for you to feel unwanted. You, my friends, have everything that God wants you to have. He has gifted you with it. You have everything that you need through Jesus Christ. And listen, you are depended on to help grow the very kingdom of God. Don't hang your head. Don't stick your head in the sand. No. Y'all have purpose. You have everything that God has gifted you with to offer the world. What a blessing. You, my friends, listen, you are part of the family of God. You're not a second-rate citizen. What God has made, he has made it first class, and that includes all of you. Second thing that we can take from this series is that our spiritual gifts or for the purpose of the upbuilding of God's kingdom through the church. You see, God has given us a platform here. He's given us an avenue. It's a family together in unity, one with another. We use our spiritual gifts to help grow His kingdom. The spiritual gifts that God has blessed us with have a united purpose that must be honoring to God. The next chapter here in 1 Corinthians is chapter 13. We may get to this at some point soon, maybe in the next year. But most of us recognize this as the love chapter. Everybody remembers this. And I like this entire chapter, but verse 4 sticks out to me. Here's what it said. Of course, this verse is referring to how we should or should not love. But there's a couple of words in the King James translation that helps me remember the purpose of our spiritual gifts. Here's verse 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. Verse 5 said that it does, does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. And it keeps no record of wrongs. Now the King James translation refers to being boastful and proud as being puffed up. I like those two little words. Don't get puffed up. You, know, you can't get puffed up, right? Use that on Lisa one time. She didn't like that too much. Don't get puffed up. To me, those words can ring true when there are Christians that use their spiritual gifts actually for the wrong purposes. Sometimes there are some who may become puffed up, as the King James Version puts it, and they may want credit for doing something in the church. That's what this means. Look at what I did. Look at what I can do. They could be using their spiritual gifts, but they're not being honoring to God because of the purpose behind it. There are churches that are that way. The only reason that a spiritual gift is given to any Christian is for the express purpose of building God's kingdom. That's it. Any other reason may be self-serving and therefore something that is not God-honoring. The third principle we can take from this series is because we are family, the spiritual state of our fellow believers has a personal effect on us. Now, today's church, our church right here, may be considered a medium to 
small size church now you might question medium but to be truthful with you it might surprise you what qualifies as a small church we're not that small is small most of us in our chapel today know each other there's some of you that know each other very well and there's some that see each other really basically just on sundays when we meet together but nonetheless i believe that we all consider each other family and in our lives we have our ups in our lives we also have our downs and you know look that's just how it works it's just how it is it's just life god never said it would be easy right but life can sometimes throw us a curveball sometimes other side of that things are great things are just peachy as some may say and as a family i'm gonna give you another word as a family, we are invested in each other. That's who we are. We're invested in each other. We're also invested in who? We're invested in the Lord together as a family. We're invested in the spiritual state of, the, of, of each other as well as personally. And our spiritual health is important to each other. We care what's happening spiritually about one another. We should be encouraging to one another. We should be, be there to celebrate victories and to lift each other up into times that might not be something that we feel like celebrating very much of. There have been times in my life that, listen, I'm, I'm just being transparent with you. There have been times in my life that if it were not for the encouragement of someone in my church family, there's a good chance that things might not have turned out as well as they did. Encouraging. And I'm thankful for those times that I needed encouragement. And somebody stepped in. That's important. I'm thankful for the times that I was able to step in also and be an encouragement to someone else. Sometimes our family needs personal encouragement. Sometimes our family needs spiritual encouragement. And there are also times where our family may need a big dose of both. We're affected by each other. We are. We're affected by each other. We have a duty to love and to honor one another and encourage one another. The fourth principle that we can take from this series is we do not receive our spiritual gifts based on our merit. We don't receive it based on our ability, but only through the grace that God gives us. You ever heard someone say something like, well, God must have had a sense of humor? You ever heard somebody say that? Well, perhaps he does. I mean, he created us, right? <laughs> so, I mean, that's definitely something funny. But the book of Genesis tells us this, and this is where we can go to prove this. It says that God created man, how? In his own image. Man certainly has a way to be humorous. I've heard comments concerning spiritual gifts such as well i can't do that i'm not comfortable with it folks have said things like i can't do that i don't have the spiritual wisdom i can't do that i haven't earned the right i can't do that i don't have those capabilities you may be able to fill in your own blank as to why you can or cannot do something if god has a sense of humor we may see it whenever he gifts us with something that we feel like we cannot do Oftentimes, he'll gift us with a gift that we're not comfortable using. And I'm certain that he doesn't gift us this way for a good laugh at our expense, but he gifts us this way because he sees fit to do so for his purposes through his grace. Our merit, our abilities have very little to do with how God gifts us. After all, we don't deserve anything from him. Anything that he decides to gift us with is not because we've earned it. It's only because he is fulfilling our lives the way that he chooses to. The way he chooses to is going to be because it, it builds up his kingdom. It will never be to uplift us. All praise and worship must be directed to him. So quickly this morning, we've identified those four things. Let me give you four things uh, four principles that we could take from this series, and there's, there's four ways that we can also apply this to our lives quickly. First, we must 
look for ways to use our gifts in the service of the church and encourage others to do the same. That's important that we do that. We have to be tuned in. We have to be looking for ways to use what God has gifted us with. Secondly, we mustn't take pride or be puffed up, as the King James Version says, in our spiritual gifts. It's not about us. It's about Him. Lord, make more of you and less of me. Third, we must not feel uh, inferior if our gifts don't seem to be as impressive as someone else's may be. doesn't matter. God gifted you with what He gifted you with. And it's all important to Him. Fourth, we should actually actively pursue spiritual gifts. We should be looking for them. We should be praying that God would reveal them to us. And you see, church, listen. We close by saying this. Family matters. Family matters. We all deal with family matters. But our family matters. Desperately matters. We're all part of the greatest family that has ever existed. The family of God. Join heirs with Jesus Christ as we travel this side. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I'm going to ask you if you would to bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment. Jesus loves you. There's not a stronger statement that I can make than that. The other part of that is, is we all need Jesus. If you're here today and you haven't discovered a spiritual gift in your life, maybe you're here today and you don't feel like you're part of any type of family. I just want you to know that the family of God is available to you. Those of us who are here today that know Jesus as their Savior, we're part of that family. And you can be too. If you will just accept Him as your Lord and Savior. So you come this morning. Our altar is open. Come and let me introduce you to this man named Jesus. I would love to tell you about him. He will change your life. Maybe there's someone you need to pray for. Maybe you're seeking membership in a church. Maybe you just want to be part of something special. Just come today and give it to the Lord. He has all the answers we could ever have questions for. So stand to your feet. You come this morning as Jesus leads you. You come.
I'd like to thank you for being here today. God bless you so much. It's a blessing uh, to be able to serve with you uh, right here. So thank you so much for being here. Don't forget tonight, uh, choir practice. We are uh, just now really getting into our Christmas program. If you'd like to be part of that, we would uh, love to have you do that. We're meeting at 515. Then we'll have a uh, Bible study uh, tonight at 630. So come be part of all of those things. Uh, Brother Mike, would you close us, please? We'd like to thank you for joining us on Facebook Live this morning. I truly hope that you've been blessed by something that's been said this morning. We just want to glorify the Lord here at Cornerstone. I pray that you've made a decision for Jesus Christ today. If you don't know him, I pray that you have come to know him this morning as your personal Savior. If you have, drop us a line. You can go to cbcaken.com backslash contact. And you can leave me a message there. You can send me an email. It'll come directly to me. And that will let me know exactly what your decision for the Lord was. If you just need a prayer request, anything like that that you may need, that's a great place for you to go to do that. So join us again. We'll be live again on Facebook Live next Sunday morning at 1045. And then also on Wednesday nights, we're live at 630 for a Bible study. So join us. We'd love to see you there. Have a great, great day.